Hello and a very very warm welcome to a channel which is all content driven, research driven and example driven. And today we are touching to a very important topic. The question is tell me about a time you failed. Right, the interview question tell me about the time a time you fail is a popular behavioral question that you might be asked at your interview but can be very tricky to answer correctly. Being asked to talk through a negative experience is daunting for most candidates as it involves describing a personal flaw or mistake without putting your interviewers off hiring you. In this particular shoot, we'll try and cover what and how to keep it as a perfect reply. Why do interviewers like to ask this question? The interviewers know that how you answer a question like tell me a time when you failed, the time you failed can reveal a great deal about you. With one simple question, a recruiter can gather a significant amount of important information to help them evaluate you for employment. By approaching this question with openness and honesty, you can show your recruiters that you are not afraid to face up to your past mistakes or failures. Holding yourself accountable for your own decisions and behavior shows a maturity that is valuable within the workplace. You will also reveal a lot about how self-aware you are. If your first reaction is to deny ever making any mistakes, you are showing a lack of awareness that can raise red flags for your interviewer. It is simply a fact that everyone makes mistakes and pretending otherwise or even worse truly believing that you never make mistakes is a definite interview no-no. Whether a candidate keeps their cool when faced with a difficult question such as this also tells the interviewer how they respond under pressure. Your example and explanation will also reveal a lot about your past job performance. Your interviewer will get an idea of where and how you are willing to take risks, how confident you are and how you perceive your own shortcomings. Your interviewers will also get to know exactly what you consider to be a failure and this can be very different to different people. How to choose a failure? Before barreling headlong into answering this type of question, it's vital that you think about the answers you are going to give and how that comes across. Choose your failure wisely or you run the risk of portraying yourself as risky, irresponsible or flaky. Your interviewer doesn't need to know about the time you unintentionally offended a top client resulting in them withdrawing their custom and losing your company a lot of money in the process. Stick to more minor failures that don't paint you in a disastrously negative light. Remember that you are trying to get hired and your answer needs to show you as an adaptable and willing employee, not liability. The failure you choose needs to somehow relate to the position you are applying for. Identify a quality or skill you need in the job you want and think of a past experience where you made a mistake in this area. Ensure that you choose an example where you learned from your mistake and went on to improve. Show yourself as being self-aware and willing to continuously learn. When thinking about the type of failure to describe, you can use your own definition of what failure means to you. Everyone has their own standards, targets and ambitions and you may have something personal to you that you fail to achieve or completely in the way you set out to do. Your failure doesn't have to be one that is huge or had a significant impact on the past employer. Finally, make sure your example of a failure is based on a real event. Don't make something up. Your interviewer is likely to see straight through your lie. We all make mistakes and owning up to a real one will make your answer more believable and relatable and a lie will never go down well. The star technique to this, how to use it? An effective technique to use when structuring an answer to a question will always be star which I recommend hard and straight majorly. Let's start with star, situation, task, action and result. Using this structure helps you create an answer that includes all the key points without rambling or veering off topic. Using a structured approach also enables you to be clear about what you are going to say and makes it easier to practice and remember a longer answer as needed in this instance. Check that any example you think of 
will fit into the star format before using them in your technique. Tell me about a time you failed. Example, here are three examples which I am laying down for you all. How to give a great response to the question using star method or star technique. Example number one, situation. When I worked as a junior marketing account manager in a large successful marketing company, a client approached us to ask about digital marketing services. Task. As I was gaining more experience and was preparing to take on more responsibilities, my manager suggested that I take the opportunity to discuss with the client what they were looking for and how we would help them. Action. I was a little nervous about this and didn't feel quite ready. So to prepare for the conversation, I looked over the services we offered as a company so I could be clear on which would be relevant for the potential new client. However, when I was having the discovery call with a lead, they asked me a question about monitoring key performance indicators and it caught me off guard. I gave the best answer I could, but afterwards the lead con contacted our company again and expressed disappointment that we were not more proactive about monitoring and reporting on the figures. We realized that I had given minimal information and had misrepresented how our company approaches this area. After talking uh, it through with my manager, we realized that I hadn't known which questions I might be asked by a lead and therefore had failed to prepare adequately resulting in me relaying incorrect information result to rectify the situation i took part in a training session with my manager involving a role play with her pretending to be a lead and asking all the questions that often get asked i practiced my responses and built up my confidence we also acknowledged that if i don't know the answer to a question that i can apologize to the client and offer to find out and get back to them I called the potential client back, apologized for the mix-up and clarified exactly how we track and report on KPIs for our clients. They were satisfied with this information and expressed thanks that I took the time to explain. They went on to book our services. Since then, I have taken the lead with two more potential clients who have both signed up as clients. Example number two. Let's start with situation. My last role was in a really busy civil service department. Task. Part of my job was to plan and arrange the monthly manager's meeting that included booking the meeting space, inviting the relevant staff and booking caterers. Action. On one particular busy week, the relevant staff members had been invited and the room had been booked. But as the meeting was in progress, I realized that I hadn't booked the catering service. This meant that 12 managers had their lunchtime meeting with no lunch. When I realized I had done this, I was embarrassed and upset. I took in hot drinks, biscuits and cakes that we had in our kitchen and explained and apologized profusely to the attendees. They were all very gracious and my direct manager assured me that it was okay and laughed it off. However, I was so disappointed in myself. Result: I booked a meeting to discuss it with my manager and ended up reviewing all my team management processes and project management systems. We decided that I was taking responsibility for a lot of different tasks that I probably should be delegating to junior staff and that was leaving me overwhelmed. As a result, I had dropped the ball on this occasion. I sent a direct email to every meeting attendee apologizing again for the mishap. I kept the responsibility for booking and arranging the monthly meetings and since I have more robust organizational processes in place, I have not missed or overlooked a task again. Let's look at example number three. Situation. I was leading my team in an advertising project at the last agency I worked at. Task. I was so eager to impress our new client that I put together a proposal that promised to deliver the work under budget and in less time than they had specified. Approach. The client was delighted and eagerly offered us the work. As the project went on, however, it became clear that we wouldn't deliver it in the shorter time frame I had suggested. I had been overly optimistic and I had over promised in my effort to impress and my company had to offer a reduced rate to make up for the delay. I had to apologize to the client and to my boss and admit my mistake. Result? I learned that it is much better to be realistic and honest from the outset rather than to over promise and under deliver. I have never made that mistake again. Now I take the approach of making conservative assurances and then delighting clients when the work comes in faster or under budget. 
mistakes that you can possibly avoid don't avoid the question stating that you have never really failed can be interpreted by the interviewer in a number of ways and none will present you as the best candidate for the job don't use examples with disastrous consequences or significant repercussions for your employers this will likely demonstrate a risky and irresponsible attitude to work make sure your answer is concise don't give a long-winded ramble about the lead up to the event if it's not relevant avoid blaming others for your failure be accountable and take responsibility for your actions make sure not to appear to be making the same mistakes over and again you want to show how you have learned from your failure and adapted to make sure it doesn't happen again top tips here are a few tips please prepare some example answers in advance that you can discuss fully that you learn from and that were resolved satisfactorily second practice your answer as much as you can so you can deliver it calmly and comfortably in the actual interview be upfront about the failure you choose to speak about your recruiter wants to see if you can be humble and willing to adapt and learn from your mistakes ask your coworkers for their honest feedback and any mistakes you have made and what you could have done better take notes and use them to formulate your answers under interview conditions even the most prepared candidates can sometimes get flustered if this question catches you off guard it's fine to ask for a minute to think about your answer before you reply just tell me about a time you failed to find out more about how a candidate reacts to a negative situation how you answer this sort of question reveals a lot about your character your ability and your willingness to learn there are ways you can plan and prepare a great answer i'm sure with this greater help you would be best prepared to next take up this question with the best face of yours so best wishes and thank you